What's up, guys? I have a workflow to share today that I think every artist should have in their toolkit. This approach helps paintings look detailed, realistic, and cool, but also loose and expressive and brushy. It's that awesome pro flex look where things look somehow detailed and simple at the same time. But most importantly, this workflow can solve something that plagues a huge majority of the artists who I mentor, and I'm betting this has gotten many of you if you have done any digital painting in the past. So hang with me for a while. Let's pinpoint this common pitfall. Let's learn a way to avoid it completely, and let's watch a cool painting take shape. Okay, tell me if this has ever happened to you. You spend countless hours adding detail and polish to something, but somehow, even with every pixel detailed to perfection, it still just somehow feels incomplete, or worse, it feels dead and lifeless. Or, have you ever done a sketch that you really like, but days later, after you do the whole final polished rendering, you end up with this sad realization that you actually liked the rough sketch that took you 10 minutes better than this labored final product. This happened to me all the time. It drove me crazy. Well, if you've followed this channel for a while, if you've painted with me before, you have probably heard me say that the answer to most issues with digital paintings lies with shapes. Shapes are simply the most important element to every design or painting. I've heard practically every legend in our industry say this, and it has really proven true in my own work. The more we can let shapes do the heavy lifting in a painting instead of fussy details or very tonal renderings, the quicker the process will flow the more expressive and interesting your brush quality will be, and most importantly, the final result will just be better. The workflow that I'll use today is essentially just painting directly with shapes. Let's just skip all of the stuff that gets us stuck. By the way, guys, if any of you would like to have the brushes that I'm using in this painting, they are available for free in the DPS Discord server. Just join with our community link and just check the freebies channel and the Photoshop ABR file is available to download there. They are simple but very effective, so I hope you enjoy them. So let's break this process down. We'll start by just blocking in the base shapes, which I've done here. Then we'll assign local colors to each shape. And then we lock those shape layers and paint really stark highlights in them, leaving some cast shadows and detail information in the mintones. And then finally, we just add some atmospheric effects, some cool brushwork to make it all gel. And that's pretty much it. It's an incredibly efficient way to work. So this video is sped up and it's edited for time a bit, but the actual total painting time for this demo painting is less than two hours start to finish. So for artists who are working professionally, this can help you crank out a lot of looks for your client without spending days on a single idea. So in this painting, I'm going for this space soldier character walking down a hill. And after my 2023 end of year post, I realized that I've become completely addicted to the same three colors. 
So today, no cyan base for me. Let's let's go cold turkey, and let's make this guy on Mars in the middle of a sandstorm. So we're going heavy on orange and red. It's going to be awesome. Okay, when designing and painting a sci-fi space armor character like this, it can feel daunting. Like, that that's a challenge. There's just a lot of tech and design language that you have to describe, right? Like, we have to show these big plates of armor with vents and rivets and seams, and we have to have things like hoses carrying air or fuel or something. And we might have to have some really detailed helmet with transparent glass, lots of little blinky lights and LEDs, all of that sci-fi stuff, right? Well, today, I'm just skipping all of that. I'm covering the vast majority of this character with large, simple shapes. Even the helmet, where our attention is likely to go first, it's essentially just a handful of simple, interesting shapes. It's nothing super detailed, nothing fussy. And there are some very learnable shape principles that we drill in Concept Art Academy that can help these shape relationships just flow out of your stylus. And that's the whole idea behind this approach. Let's let the shapes do all of the work. If it looks cool as simple blocked in shapes, let's not wreck that with a painting where the detail starts to compete with the design. That's where paintings get stuck. Instead, let's only use detail and visual activity sparingly. Let's save those noisy areas for focal points where we want the attention to go. So instead of those heavy space armor details, I'm basically just relying on a few large shapes to cover most of the character, but I'm hinting at all of that detail underneath. So parts of the helmet, these hoses around the chest, all of it implies greater complexity without showing it. This is kind of impressionism in a way. We're showing little hints of detail and counting on our viewer to complete the image in their own mind. We have to kind of invite them into the party to connect the dots. And this is what makes art engaging, is leaving that space for your viewer to participate. Let's talk about highlights and shadows. So I'm going for something really stark here. So there's this intense jump in value between highlight and shadow. And this really fits my setting. It makes it seem like the sunlight on Mars or Planet X or wherever is really harsh. But this also keeps us in our lane on controlling value. With each shape, I'm trying to limit it to just two values, the highlight tone of each shape and the shadow, both existing practically as absolutes. It's either catching direct sunlight or it's not. And even at the earliest phases of this highlighting step, the painting takes this really cool jump forward in realism, right? It starts feeling three-dimensional rather than something flat and graphic. I love that. Always a huge like payoff moment in the painting. But just as important as the highlights and shadows are the midtone. And this is that little border spot where light turns to dark. And we can show so much information here. So for these big orange shoulder pads, I'm trying to give them a padded texture, like they're made of these little linear cells filled with some kind of filling or 
armor. And actually the inspiration from this came from one of those lead aprons that you have to wear if you ever get an x-ray. They kind of look like this material, so I thought it would make sense that a spacesuit could have something like that to protect from radiation. But instead of exhaustively rendering each part of each armor pad, I'm basically just leaving it as that bright highlight, that dark shadow, and then I'm either painting or smudging little lines that cross over from light to dark or dark to light to imply all of this texture and detail within. It communicates volumes and you hardly paint anything. And I'm doing this over and over on the helmet, on the darker parts of the suit, like the pants, the gun barrel, just about all of this painting follows these simple steps, really. It's highlight and shadow to make it look three-dimensional, and mid-tone treatment to give it some texture, and then you're done. So if your work feels stuck, or if you're rendering something for days but it still feels like it's somehow unfinished, give this a try. And remember, you're still free to add as much detail in at the end as you want. But if you set things up in this simple way, like a shape-first approach to pretty much everything, it just sets you up for success. It lets you spot problems as you go rather than leaving you in this dead end at the end wondering what went wrong. So after adding a few atmospheric effects to make the character gel with the environment and a few cool little brushes to make it feel all loose and expressive. I think we can call this one done. And I think this is pretty cool for under two hours. If you would like to learn more about shape design principles and go through a program to really build these skills and a lot more, definitely check out Concept Art Academy. Our next session starts in February and enrollment is open now. I'll see you next time, guys. In the meantime, good luck with your artwork. Paint something cool today. <laughs>